Hey everyone, this is Lomi, and for today's doll project, I'm doing something a little different from the usual. This project started all the way back in December when I pre-ordered some Nendoroid doll bodies. They finally came in, and I hadn't planned to start on them soon, but I felt a pull to work on this character in particular, so I figured I'd get started. Not long after the bodies arrived, I ordered a few faceplates from Chibi Chop Shop that are as close to the body color as I could get. I'll be using the boy body in cream for this particular custom, which is going to be my character Zade from my newest epic fantasy series. The first book is called Spectrum Blade, and I'm currently finishing the third book in the series, which should be out in late October or early November. This series is going a lot slower than the Snake's Blood Saga, which was Rune and For All's story, but I had the benefit of writing all those books ahead of time so I could release them fast and have an existing series out there. There were a lot of reasons I did it that way, and there are some things I'd do differently now, but that's a story for another time. For this series, Spectrum Legacy, the books just go out as I finish writing them and get them edited, and that means they're being published a little slower. These faceplates aren't quite a perfect match for the body color. The body is a little more pink, but it's just going to have to do. I'd originally intended to do full repaints for the faces, but I like the shape of the eyes on these, and the eyes are the right color. So I'll just be painting over the eyebrows to change them to white. I'll be doing that with some acrylic paint because I won't have to seal it and right now the less work I have to do the better. I've been working hard to finish some of my big doll projects but the past two weeks I haven't felt very creative. There's not really a non-sad way to say it, but uh, my dog died and it's been really hard for our whole family. Sochin made a few cameo appearances on my channel in the years I've run it. We had her for more than 11 years. She was here for my daughter's whole life and was a companion and source of emotional support for us through some of the hardest things I've ever had to get through. That's part of why I wanted to work on finishing this particular project now, because the way the dog looked was part of the reason Zade looks the way he does too. When I started planning this series, I was finishing writing the Snake's Blood Saga, and if you've read it, you'll know the mages in Snake's Blood all eventually end up having white hair and blue eyes. But that's Snake's Blood Saga, and this is Spectrum Legacy, a totally different series. I'd originally planned to use a different color combination for Zaid, specifically because it was so prevalent in my previous work. But for Zaid, nothing wanted to stick. Eventually, I found myself looking at my dog, and she was white with blue eyes. And even though I'd been resisting that combination, looking at my dog, it made perfect sense for Zaid. His people came from a region that was really cold and snowy. Being a husky, my dog was also made for snow. So while I watched her in the snow one year, I decided to go ahead and reuse that color scheme for Zaid's character. I was happy to find some faceplates that would work for him with just a little adjustment, though I only planned to use the angry face and the smile for Zaid, and the winking faceplate might get wiped and repainted for the other cream body I got. I wasn't totally happy with the shape of the eyebrows on the angry plate, so I changed them a little, and I'll have to figure out a good way to remove the remaining point of the original eyebrow eventually. I think I might be able to scrape it off with a needle, so I may experiment with that at some point. Just not right now. When it came to hair, I wasn't able to find any hair pieces I liked online, so I ended up 3D sculpting my own. I streamed a portion of the process, and I'll probably upload the replay of that stream soon, even though it wasn't anything super special. It was the last time Sochi made an appearance in any footage I took though, so that's a little bittersweet but also kind of special that she got to be a part of it before the end. I cut the shapes for the neck and faceplate using a blank I found on Thingiverse, then 3D printed the hair in resin. It's a bit of a snug fit, and I didn't take the split between the front and back into consideration when I sculpted, so it's not perfect, but I think it's not bad. 
It gaps a little, and I'm not quite sure why, but I can always sand things down more in the future to get a better fit. With the doll's body done, the next step was making clothing. It turned out the patterns I'd previously made for my smallest ball-jointed doll fit the Nendroid doll body, so I used the Pookie Pookie pants and shirt pattern to create his outfit. For the pants, I used the thinnest knit black fabric I could find, and left the bottom edge of the pants raw, since knits won't fray. And that let me get extra thin legs that would fit underneath his boots. I didn't do any zigzagging or rolled hems for anything in his outfit because he's not really going to wear anything else and he's not really going to get played with so durability isn't as much of a concern. But if you're interested in these tiny patterns, I'll leave links to the tutorials for them in the video description so you can check them out. After the pants, I decided to go ahead and work on his boots. I have an Android doll that has boots already, so I studied how hers were made and then modeled my own boot in three parts. There's the foot, the sheath piece that fits over the leg, and the joint peg for the ankle. I printed these in resin too, and unfortunately for me, I was a little overzealous in putting them together because I ended up breaking the ankle pegs on both feet and just super glued them together. I'll fix them eventually, but right now I just want to get things assembled. Since I'd intended the joints to move, I didn't want to use paint on these because it might scrape off. I'd heard alcohol ink could be used to dye 3D printed resin. So I decided to use some old alcohol markers on the boots to see how well that worked, because dye wouldn't rub off at the joints like paint. It took a few tries to find a brown marker color I actually liked though, and the coloring job left a lot to be desired. This was good for an experiment, I guess, but when I reprint some boots for this guy so that it'll have a working ankle joint, I'll probably just buy brown resin for my printer and use that. I didn't want the brown marker to stain the doll, so I left the ankle pegs white and painted over the colored part with matte varnish. The varnish turned weirdly green in reaction to the alcohol marker, so I definitely don't recommend it. With his boots drying, I moved on to his tunic. I told my cover artist that I liked him in blue, and she did an amazing job designing an outfit for him, so I decided to make the tunic resemble what she came up with for the cover. I used my Pookie Pookie shirt pattern, but made it longer so it would be tunic length. Like with the pants, I'll have the link to this shirt's tutorial in the video description. I sewed the facing for the collar and back by hand, then finished by machine. I kept things thin by using pinking shears on the edges of the fabric so a rolled hem wouldn't be necessary. There's not too much to say about it otherwise. I did sewing while my daughter Evie played with the special workshop toys I keep put away so that when I really need a distraction, I can bust those out and be like, oh hey, you haven't gotten to play with these special things for a while. It tends to buy me about an hour of sewing time before she gets bored, so I pretty much finished the tunic in that sitting. I was really happy with the color of this blue scrap, and I really like how Zade looks in blue because it's a nice color to go with his hair and eyes. In the end, there was actually another reason I was happy with reusing the blue eyes white hair combination for Zade, and that's because it sort of let me flip what I did with my own stories. Where those colors mean power and snake's blood, in Spectrum it's totally reversed. Zade is the only character who lacks magic, so it becomes sort of the opposite of what you'd expect based on my previous series. Sort of a fun little nod to myself, I guess. Partway through sewing on the gold ribbon edging, I realized I'd forgotten the lower half of Zade's sleeves. On the cover, my artist made his sleeves black, but I wanted to incorporate some white into his outfit, 
So I used a white knit and sewed the lower sleeve part into the upper sleeve while I added the gold trim. To keep from accidentally sewing the tiny sleeves shut, I slid a palette knife in to make sure the needle only went through the correct layers of fabric. It ended up being super easy and I'm glad I had that little moment of ingenuity because it saved me a lot of struggle and gave a nice result. I used super thin velcro on the back but set it down low so his tunic could be parted on top to access the little slot for his stand. The last thing his outfit needs is a belt. I happen to have a piece of strap and some tiny buckles in my drawer so I made him a short little belt right on the spot. It was unexpectedly super difficult to get it to actually go through the little hole I made for the buckle though. I think trying to get the belt to buckle was the hardest part of his entire outfit which is actually kind of ridiculous. I tried making the hole bigger, but it was still a struggle. I'll add a little ring later so it stays in place nicely, but at this point I was ready for his most important accessory. So we went back to Blender and finished a tiny little sword, which I printed in resin, painted with silver spray paint, and obviously the Spectrum blade needs some color, so I decided to try some cool looking holographic top coat I've been wanting to experiment with for years. It claimed to work on any backing color and unfortunately that was very much not the case because even after three coats it didn't look like it had anything on it, like at all. I eventually moved it to direct sunlight and saw the tiniest bit of sparkle but it definitely wasn't as advertised so I had decided to explore some more colorful options. I had a piece of iridescent cellophane, so I tried to decoupage it onto the sword, but the first piece was too big and wouldn't stick. So I cut it down, tried again, and the smaller piece still wouldn't stick. I never would have thought the sword would be so tricky, so I moved on to one last thing for Zade. He's got pointed ears. Almost all the characters in the series do. Or, well, Zade has one pointed ear. The other was cut, so he's got a blunted ear on one side, the left side. I'd considered adding to the ears with epoxy, but I wasn't sure how well the paint would hold up with the hair going on and off around it all the time, so instead I decided to just cut down the existing ears. The downside of this is that now the hair I sculpted to fit around the full-sized ears won't look as nice, but I can always make revisions later and reprint the hair. Creatives will sometimes say anything worth doing is worth doing badly, and I found myself thinking about that while doing things like cutting his ears instead of using epoxy, and deciding not to spend time sanding or priming things like his hair and boots. The nature of the quote is usually taken to mean that anything worth doing is worth the practice it takes to go from not doing it well during the learning process to being capable of a nice finished result. During this project though, I also sort of came to realize that it can also grant a lot of creative freedom because it allows for imperfection. Not everything you make will be the best thing you ever make. Sometimes when you're tired or stressed or uninspired or going through a period of hardship, you may not have it in you to do what you know you can achieve when you're at the top of your game. So it's important to remember that saying in those times and remember that it doesn't have to be the best. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't even have to be good. It just needs to be something that helps you keep creating. A bridge to a better time in your life when you can accomplish bigger and better and more challenging things. It's fine for things to be small or imperfect as long as you give yourself grace in knowing that even when things aren't incredible, you still took the time to show up and devote yourself to a creative exercise. Especially when creativity is something that helps feed your spirit. After I finished filing down the ears, I made the decision to paint over the hair with acrylics because the white UV resin yellows a little during printing and it wasn't as crisp as his eyebrows so it sort of bothered me. 
Using a thin paint applied in a few coats helped me avoid really obvious brush strokes, so I didn't have to fight with getting out my airbrush or wrestling a noisy compressor. It also gave me plenty of time to think about solutions for the sword, which was the last thing left unfinished. Somewhere along the line, I remembered my parents had given me a roll of rather expensive holographic washi tape for Christmas, and I'd been saving it for a special occasion. This washi tape ended up being absolutely perfect for this project, easy to apply, wrap around the sword, and trim along the edges so it was a perfect fit. I can't believe I didn't think of it sooner, but I'm just glad I eventually remembered. After the tape was on, I painted the sword's grip with some extra thick black paint that gave it just a little texture. And while the sword's reflective surface doesn't show up too well in the ultra-bright, white-toned lights I use for filming, switching to a regular light bulb lets the holographic effect really shine. This is exactly the look I was hoping to have for the Spectrum Blade, and I feel like it really captures the light my artist drew on the sword on the book's cover. So now he's done, Zaid is the first of the crew to be finished, and I put him on my bookshelf next to my stock of books. I always have some on hand for when I get requests for signed copies or make appearances at local events, and now he gets to stand guard. Out of the whole project, I think what I like the least is the boots, but I expect they'll work out much better when they're printed in brown instead of colored. And also not broken, because next time I won't try to force the pegs in and will actually take the time to make sure nothing warped before jamming them together. And I guess that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Bye.